last week. Um, yeah. We didn't say I was going to call in. I was going to tell everybody. Mark had emergency surgery. So that's the way to end a year. And you know what? We got that behind us. So 2023 is going to be awesome. But I've been writing 2024. I, I've been writing 2019 <laughs> the past <laughs> four years. So we had this discussion earlier. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. If I, you're getting a check from Boston Connect, you might want to check the date mm, on it uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Mark ended up having um, emergency surgery last week. He had his appendix out. Um which, you know, hey, I'm sort of happy that I hate to say that that's all it was because it was sort of, you know, it's a serious thing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it wasn't me. Why are you laughing at me? Mark's in the other room, by the way. So you can hear. I know. Sure. He's just shaking, shaking his, his head. head. Yeah. But that's why um, I wasn't here last week. But he is doing fantastic. So um, yeah. we just wanted to let everybody know that. So for those who did know and were sending thoughts, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. But Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of excited. Like I, I came into 2023 really being excited. Um, Mark and I do our annual trip uh, into the city for a night or two, and um, it was wonderful. And all of the agents at Boston Connect, you guys all uh, gave us a wonderful gift this year for the Omni, and we used that at the Omni Seaport this year Yeah, and uh, ended our year really nice. So thank you for that, and you and Mary gave us a wonderful uh, gift card for Christmas to Fogo de Chao where we had uh, lunch, I mean dinner. It was wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was good. It was a, a really wonderful way to sort of end the year, just nice and relaxed. We went and saw our comedian and everything. And then when we woke up the next day, it was like beautiful, sunny. I took a picture, put it on Instagram. Um, it's a little bit uh, filtered, but it looks so beautiful. <laughs> it was really, really, I could have used the original photo and it was yeah. really, really pretty good. of the Charles River. So I'm looking good. forward to 2023. How about you? Yeah, looking forward to it. I have my new little notebook there. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Organized my new little Louis Vuitton notebook that mm. I got from, from Sharon uh, for Christmas. So mm. I'm very excited about that. I got that all organized. But um, nice. yeah, I had a good New Year's, spent it with some friends. And I actually uh, was given tickets to the Patriots game on Sunday. Yeah, so nice. uh, my awesome. friend and I were 10th row <laughs> from the 20 yard line. Wow. I, we have no idea. We, the whole time, we're like, we're not worthy of these seats. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> we we were not worthy, but um, but we had a really great time. So um, that's yeah, awesome. That's a good way to start the year. Absolutely, and um, you know, my family we all had our lentil soup because that's our tradition. I thought that you would be popping over, but then I knew that you were at the game. So yeah, forgiven. You better get a you better but get some uh, progresso lentil soup in you though. Yeah, I I yeah I needed yeah. some. Soup Mary after. Mary was with Jasmine up in Maine and. Uh, they should sent me pictures of them eating their lentil soup. So that's a tradition in our house. So that's what we did. Hey, George, how about you? How was your holiday in the new year? Oh, it was very low key, but who's complaining? <laughs> you know. the new year, though, uh, we went to Boston for first night, myself and my brother, and it was pretty good. It was raining yeah. really bad, but I was, wish I was wishing it was drier. But there's always next year, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But, and they had a couple ice sculptures. I saw those. and Oh, but they melted. They the melted. Yeah, they were, they were all melting when I was yeah. there. I could see one was an, I don't even know who it was, but it had it was an arm. And I was yeah. like, oh, his arm's about to fall off. <laughs> The, the sculpture out. or yeah, somebody? The sculpture, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't make out what they were by the time I visited. Oh, the, oh. The designer it was very me, warm. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really warm. So the designer and me felt bad that they had spent all that time I carving know. out the ice, and they could have put them in a big freezer if well, it was even possible. And they did you know. do that, you know. They did have them in freezers and brought them out that morning. So New Year's Eve morning, uh, they brought them out. But I said they should just have like walk-in freezers. Like just set up, like it's just all glass. So exactly, yeah. you know what I mean. And would, you can just would look you at them. do that though? Like, would you walk through? No, like I wouldn't a walk, walk in through. No, no, no. I would look <laughs> on the outside, outside, all glass on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But when, I would think that the glass would get all frosty, and you can't see them. No, they uh, heat them up. Yeah, they they would find a way. You know, like, do you go to the store and buy ice cream? <laughs> it's amazing how that can be a freezer. Yeah, the but glass door. But yeah, but think about all like when you open it and then you close it again, it gets all frosted and you can't see. Yeah, I know, but no one would be opening it. All right, we're digressing <laughs> big time here. So, uh, so to all of our WATD listeners, we hope that you had a wonderful holiday season and uh, that you started off 2023 um, on a good note. Um, I. I do want to say, I, I mean, 
I watch football occasionally. I'm not a huge football fan, but for some reason, this whole situation with Demar Hamlin um, has really like gotten to my soul. And he's a 24 year old baby, is what I'm thinking of him as, and probably because my kids are just a couple years older. Um, and of course, we have a lot of agents and family members who play football, and honestly, heartfelt feelings and thoughts and prayers are going to him his family the bills family um you know everybody the buffalo bills and everyone so yeah hopefully it will be okay it's interesting because on sunday i was at the game and like i said we were 10 rows from the field it's the closest i've ever ever been (laughs) okay i've never never been so um yeah the closest ever and i literally turned to my friend and i was like oh my gosh like you can actually see that they're like real people like (laughs) like they were so we were so close that like Mm -hmm. you know when you see things on tv you think like okay it's a it's a game but then when you're there and you actually see like live humans Mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's definitely it's it's sad uh, yeah yeah and you could see the emotion on everybody's face and all the players and everything so it was a really hard thing for them to see and witness and to be a part of and um I commend obviously the NFL for you know calling the game I guess it was up to the coaches and the players and uh so all good thoughts are going out to um Damar Hamlin so and hopefully he will be okay and he'll be playing maybe he'll even be playing this week against the Patriots who knows I doubt it but whatever i hope i hope i hope so anyways what are we going to be talking about tonight we're ringing in the new year we've been uh thinking about all the different shows we're going to be doing if you have any ideas or suggestions um that you have for the show for us definitely get in touch with us uh you can do that uh how mel (laughs) (laughs) real estate at bostonconnect.com yeah you can do that you can call us here um i was going to say at the studio but no we're at we're at our office 718-268-8000 or you can always go to bostonconnect.com and find Mm -hmm. all of our contact information there yeah. or you could call right now george will pipe you through yeah. and give us some ideas or if you just want to say hello and um you know what you have go- going on for the new year that would be great we sort of have we have an idea of a topic but we're happy to talk to you 781-837-4900 <laughs> i thought you were going to say we have an idea of what's going on <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we'll see how the t- tonight goes mm-hmm. um but you actually came up with this so mm. every year sort of to end the year or even begin the year we sort of talk about our bold predictions and our you know mm-hmm. the year end recap and stuff and we sort of started that discussion last week um mm-hmm. Kristen and I but today you wanted to talk about the importance of hiring a real estate professional in 2023 mm-hmm. so I think that you wanted to talk about this because the market that we're in and what we're going into is you definitely need a professional correct? 100% yeah uh, absolutely so I'll admit that I know that a lot of people the past couple of years have said, you know, what do I need a real estate agent for? What are they actually doing? And there's so many things that we do do behind the scenes that if you're not in a transaction and you don't have an agent that is communicating with you all the time, like I'll find myself all guilty of it. Like we're doing a lot of things in the back end that our clients aren't even aware of that we're doing. Um, it can be hard to sort of say, well, why am I going to spend, you know, give that much money uh, for compensation as a commission to somebody when I could just put a sign out on my front doorstep. Mm -hmm. And that may be true that you could do that. I think you get what you pay for. And yes, there could have been potentially you could have had the opportunity in this reckless market that we've had in the, you know, at the beginning of 2022. Oops, I just lost my pen. In the beginning of 2022 and the sort of, it was in 2021 as well. Yeah, you could probably just put the sign out there and things would go along. But there's so many processes that happen that you really have to know what you're doing in order for that to go smoothly. So with a lot of headache, yeah, you certainly could have done that. Um, But one of the things that was interesting with a lot of the articles that I was reading is that 70% of the agents, and this is according to Lawrence Young, he's my boyfriend, he is uh, (laughs) the chief economist for NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors. We were listening to him in December, and he said 70% of the current realtors that are out in in the industry right now have never been through a declined market or a more difficult market Mm -hmm. or a sluggish market. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of what do I do's right yeah 
I'm just going back to like when I even first started with you. So like six, almost seven years ago now, I remember having to call, <laughs> having to call sellers and begging them like, can we please do an open house this weekend? Can yeah. we please do an open house? Mm-hmm. And they're just like, no, I don't like, I remember mm-hmm. getting no's and just being yeah. like, no, I, I think, it, you know, if somebody wants to buy it, they'll come along. Mm-hmm. And it's just, we're so totally not there anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I, Obviously, everybody knows that the inventory is low, but the the demand for homes is is still high. Exactly, and that is you know we're still going to see that trend you know through the beginning of this year and at the end of the year throughout the year. And a lot of the emphasis, obviously, everybody has heard this because we've said it on our show. A lot of it had to do with the rising. Uh, interest rates. So that m- sort of made a lot of the buyers sort of nervous. And then the sellers weren't getting as much as they were hoping for. Some of them were sort of waiting out the market to get the to the top. You never know when you're at the top until you see it coming down. Mm-hmm. So um, and then I think now there's a lot of sellers who are like, oh, it looks like I missed it. So I'm not going to bother. But I know that interest rates, they're saying will be going down again. But the problem is, is the interest rates are pretty reasonable even now. Yeah. It's just that what we had was so, so just unrealistic to even have them that low. Well, even if it, even if when they were in like the sevens uh, a couple months ago, like there's so many different loan programs that will, that like if you have a loan officer, again, who is a professional <laughs> and does this all the time and has a lot of different programs to choose from and sort of navig- help you mm-hmm. navigate through, you can get a low um, interest rate in, in mm-hmm. based off of whatever program you go through. You can get a low um, monthly payment because at the end of the day, after closing, if you can't afford the mortgage, mm-hmm. you, know, you shouldn't be buying the house. Shouldn't be buying the house. Yeah. And I think what ended up happening, and again, if you want to um, have any discussion about this topic, please give us a call. I mean, we haven't talked to you in a while. So 781-837-4900. George is at the studio in Marshfield. We're in our home studio here in Pembroke Center at Boston Connect Real Estate, which is the sponsor for our show, along with my team, uh, McNamara Broker Team, or Sharon and Mary Team, or... I don't even know what we are anymore, but us. Um, so feel free to give us a call, 781-837-4900. And we're talking about the reason why you will need a professional in this coming year if you're thinking about buying or selling a house. It goes both ways, by the way, mm-hmm. because even if you're buying a house, you want a professional that's standing back next to you yeah. that understands yeah. what happens in a declined market, mm-hmm. right? So um, it has shifted to be a little bit more um, a buyer's market at this point, right? Yeah, I think that um, we and we've talked about this a, a couple of times recently is like we've seen a lot of price adjustments um, mm-hmm. and that might might have been like, you know, wishful thinking or whenever it is, you know, somebody mm-hmm. did the CMA for that property that might have been the, the price that they could have gotten then. But it would have been six months ago or whatever the mm-hmm. timeline would have been. However, you know, there there's a lot of buyers out there that aren't going to settle. Yeah. You know, this is sort of what they've been waiting for yeah. um and if they've if they're in a position where maybe they're renting month to month or they're living with family or something and they have time on their hands mm-hmm. they have time on their side it's it's less likely for them to like give away yeah. <laughs> everything that they own yeah to get and they house. don't have to settle you know yeah. what i mean they're in a position where they don't have to but and then of course we did our show you know a few weeks ago when we talked about you know the d's of real estate with you know there's death divorce disability those types of things you know those people are definitely having to move and those you know the people who are on the fence of do i put my house on the market or not you definitely should because there are always those people out there yeah you want to be one of less inventory versus one of more inventory and guess what that first weekend in february is right around the corner when the Patriots play in the Super Bowl. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Yeah. Uh, So the Super Bowl, and that's when we say that, you know, the spring market actually starts. So that's why we're suggesting you definitely want to get in touch with a professional now if you're thinking about putting your house on the market because you want to be sooner than later on that. The other thing that I found extremely interesting when I was doing some research for today's show Mm -hmm. was, you know, the cream uh, always rises to the top, right? So the... That's the professional, those are the agents who are going to know how to withstand any type of market, any type of questions that come up. Um, 
And especially to, you know, for newer agents, if they're being mentored and things like that, I think that that's helpful as well if they're working with someone who's been through it. But one of the other interesting things that Lawrence Young said in that webinar that we watched was that we can expect more releases in 2023. Yeah. Oh. And it's interesting because at the end of 2022 in our small office, I mean, we yeah. have, what, 34 agents here. In our small office, we saw several. Yeah. I mean, one week we had five releases. Yeah, I would say, yeah, probably we had five in December, which is a yeah. lot. I, mm -hmm. I know five in the grand scheme of everything that, that we sold is not a lot, but five in a short amount of time um, is sort of indicating that there is a shift in the market. Yes. Because how many, I, and I do the releases for the company, so I'm just thinking like even, you know, 2020 and 2021, I might've done five all year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but to have five in one month, it's, um, it wasn't uncommon before. Yeah. Um, in, you know, the market before 2020 and 2021, yeah. but right now it might be the shift that we see. Mm-hmm. And that's why you want to have a professional because one of the things that they were saying is the reason for more releases is because the agent isn't familiar with certain things. I'm not saying that was because of our agents, but I don't know who our agents were working with on the other side. But I yeah. do know one of them basically got released and we had both sides of that transaction in our office. So mm -hmm. um, one of our agents had a listing and one of the other agents had the buyer and the reason why it fell apart is because of advice that the buyer got from people at work that they heard it wasn't a good time to buy a house, mm -hmm. which got the buyer really nervous. Mm -hmm. And I remember because that was part of the conversation with that person saying, I just really want to go through everything with you because he was giving up that um, yeah. Mass Dreams program. He got the house at a really a reasonable price, you know, no competition because it was sort of off market type thing but he was listening to the advice of others. So we can't do anything about that. Yeah, and I think the re sort of introduction of some of these contingencies are also a factor in releases. So it's the mm. people are doing home inspections again. People yep. are doing, you yeah, know. So stop right there. So does your agent, you want to make sure that your agent knows how to negotiate for a mm -hmm. home inspection. I just mm -hmm. want to pop that in there. Give me another one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I got your off, trained off. I know. Off. You're like, I uh, no, startled I me a little No, bit. I was excited because I liked that where you were going with that. Yeah. So um, I'm just thinking of like under other contingencies. So um, like a home sale contingency. We're seeing mm -hmm. more home sale contingencies. So if, you know, it's a domino effect. If one falls, the next one falls, mm -hmm. and, you know, unless you're able to sort of catch it before it falls completely. Yeah. <laughs> and know? on that point, you're making such great points. I'm just going to like reiterate the reason why you need a professional in those circumstances for that situation with home sale contingencies. It's really, really important that your agent is very aware of and is capable of negotiating timelines because if you put your house on the market and it's contingent upon you finding suitable housing or if you've already found your house but it's contingent upon you selling your other house you definitely want to make sure that your professional agent knows how to manage those dates so you don't lose any of your deposits mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Um, I would say an appraisal contingency we're seeing, you know, it's, I haven't in a long time seen like the appraisal gaps. Yeah. Remember when we were mm -hmm. seeing those like, oh, if it doesn't appraise, you know, we'll cover $20,000 you know, of that. Mm -hmm. We're like, I don't think we're seeing a lot of that anymore. The reason is, is because a lot of people are not going over asking anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's why they don't have to. That was your point just a little bit ago, right? Yeah. Buyers don't have to you know, take the shirt off their back in order to get the house. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fairly confident that if a property is priced right, it, it'll sell no matter what. <laughs> I, I think that the, you're not going to eat crackers. She wants to eat crackers on air, <laughs> and all of you will have to listen to the crunching sound. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't do it, but they do look good. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
uh yeah where was i going with that oh yeah so if it's if it's priced accordingly it will sell and like i like to say there's a bum for every seat mm-hmm. you know there's there's a buyer for every house i just told that to one of our agents today you know she's putting on an antique in in bridgewater mm-hmm. um tomorrow i'm so proud of her yeah actually i do want to interrupt you i keep on interrupting you but you're coming up go with right all, ahead but you're coming up with all the ideas that are prompting <laughs> me to you know say some pretty good stuff um, well, I think it's pretty good stuff, but I was up in my office today and it's nice, you know, you got the hustle and bustle of agents coming in and out of the office again, now that the holidays are over and we have all the decorations away. It looks completely naked yeah, in this office. I it's literally weird. was like, oh, should I go downstairs and like get things from storage? <laughs> like this is so weird in here. So like, it doesn't look like anyone lives here anymore. <laughs> I know. I'll fix it. Don't you worry. Uh, but Kristen was here. So Kristen Hallett, who did the show with you last week and is um, very common to our show to be a co-host yeah. here. Um, she has a new a- listing coming on in Bridgewater, a beautiful antique. Uh, she's super excited about it. But, you know, she asked me to sit with her today to look at numbers and she wants to make sure that they're getting the most. She doesn't want to underprice it. She doesn't want to overprice it. So there we are with, you know, our 30 years of experience combined, basically, mm-hmm you know, going through all these numbers and, you know, having an antique, you have a very intricate demographic yeah. that will probably yeah. love it. I mean, the location is perfect. You can walk to you know, right, right next to the library, you know, you walkability to like the schools and everything like that. She had all these great ideas. And then I heard her on the phone and I was upstairs and I was like, I wrote it in my notes. You have to have an agent who can think outside the box in mm-hmm. times of uncertainty. You want to go with the people who are certain, the, per- the person who is on fire to think outside the box and to make things different and not just say, well, you didn't have any showings. I don't know what to tell you. Well, I, I've said this to some of our agents. It's like it, they'll say, oh, well, the house has this. It, like it, it's near the you know the the library or the train tracks or it's on a main road okay well your seller didn't mind when they bought it Mm -hmm. don't you think another buyer will come along and not mind like Mm -hmm. again there's a bum for every seat (laughs) and there really is and you know that is you know when might not be a big deal to people yeah i mean i live on a main road i don't have children i don't have a dog i don't have you know whatever fine by me main roads don't bother me i mean i grew up on dorchester Avenue, and columbia road so there you go i mean it couldn't get much busier than that so i guess it's where you're coming from right Mm -hmm. Uh, with the street thing but i was so proud of Kristen today uh, because you know this property is in bridgewater and she thought, oh, this would be a one, like a perfect house for maybe, again, we're not trying to steer. We're not doing anything to do with fair housing, anything like that. We're just trying to think, who would this be a great house for? And she was thinking maybe one of the professors at Bridgewater State College or University, mm-hmm. that that would be a perfect house, perfect location for maybe, you know, administration or someone there. Yeah. And I thought that that was a great idea. And I heard her on the horn. I'll talk, that's the phone. <laughs> I heard her on the horn. <laughs> <laughs> but when I said that, all I could think of for some reason was the Flintstones when he had that big white horn, like horn thing. That oh, he, he, I, I don't remember yeah, that. I don't remember. <laughs> um, but no, I heard her on the phone. She called the university and said, can you help me get in touch with the right person who might know, you know, this could potentially be a great house for somebody that either works there or something like oh, that. Yeah, that's right? nice. Yeah. yeah, so she did that today and they connected her with the um, off-campus housing. Wow. Yeah. Great idea, Kristen. Yeah. So that is true because I know, so I went to Florida Southern and then I went to Bridgewater State and when I was going before I even started class there, I, there is a website and Mm -hmm. it's, it's all like sort of vetted through the school, but it's all off campus housing and sort of checked out making sure like, okay, this is a real person. This is real, Mm -hmm. whatever. So if she could get on that, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's maybe the university would want to purchase the house and have it for off campus housing. Yeah. I'm sure. $10 million. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, that, that That's was, what we came up with. That was the price we thought would be perfect for this house. So, um, but again, if you are interested in a beautiful, renovated, antique home uh, in Bridgewater, uh, definitely give Kristen Howlett um, yeah. a phone. Uh, you call her. You can call us at the office. Um, and I think she's Kristen at BostonConnect.com. Yep. Yep. Kristen at BostonConnect.com. So again, Kristen Howlett. She's a full-time real estate agent. She was in here today. All day. All day doing her thing. She moves around the office every so often. Yeah. Like I saw her downstairs. Like, <laughs> she was in the basement. She yeah. was in, in the, the recliner. Company. Yeah, in the recliner. She had her computer on there. She was working on her, yep. you know, her thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she forwarded me all the photos today. And it's just They're beautiful. beautiful. Absolutely yep. beautiful. Um, so again, I'm going to repeat what I had said. In times of uncertainty, you certainly want somebody who is certain or certainly knows how to manipulate, not even really manipulate, but handle the ups and downs of whatever this market is going to bring us. Unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know which way it's going. The good news for me is I've been doing this for 21 years, so I've seen quite a few ups, downs, sideways. Yeah. What, well, sideways? Is <laughs> something. Yeah, sideways. Is. I, just something to note on that is like, think about how important it, it was, like, even for her to come in here. Like, mm -hmm. not to like toot our horns, but like, <laughs> but let's, let's, let's do that. Like, um, being a part of a team, being mm -hmm. like, it's, we're not, we can be virtual, okay? Uh -huh. But we're not. We're not a virtual company. We mm -hmm. we thrive off of being with each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we think of all 30 plus agents that we have here as one big team. Mm -hmm. And sort of, you're, we encourage our agents to come in and sort of have these discussions with us because we're always here. Mm -hmm. And um, other agents are always here. I know Aaron was in here this morning when Kristen first got mm -hmm. here and people pop in and out. Um, Michelle was here. it's interesting too because I know we're sort of going off a side track here just talking about boston connect real estate but um i that's one thing is i'm saying to all of our watd listeners and all of our friends out on facebook is i am so confident in the agents that we have that i know that they can navigate any type of you know situation that comes up in this market whatever way it goes that they'll be able to navigate it but i know one of a, an agent who recently joined us i won't say her name because it you know because of what i'm going to say next but she's a great agent um and she's been on the show and everything and i was texting with her just a couple of days ago about something <coughs> and we were talking about training and and did the different things and what you were saying is sitting in the office is when you learn the most here yeah. i am with 21 years of experience but there's also agents who are here with you know a couple of years of experience but they are still maybe doing learning they're doing something that maybe i never came across but this yeah. agent said to me i learned I have learned more in the short time I have been with your office than over the two to three years that she was with another company. Yeah. And I thought that's because our agents are so open to talking to each other and helping each other out with all of the situations. Well, I said this to her. I said this to another agent that recently joined. Every every agent that joins us, I always say, like, J just come into the office. If you're consistent with what you do, you have no choice but to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is my little tidbit because I started working on this upstairs and I'm going to send it out to all our agents and do one-on-ones with everybody um, just for, you know, goal setting and things like that for 2023 is, and I chose not to do it at the end of last year because mm -hmm. I feel like everybody was just hectically ending the year and all that. But yeah, because somehow it crept up real fast. It really did. <laughs> yeah, it really did. But, you know, you don't want to run away from accountability. You want to run towards it if you want to be successful. So um, that's my little tidbit for everybody in the world. It has nothing to do with just agents, but isn't that a good one? Mm -hmm. if, if you want to be successful and you want true success, do not run from accountability. Run to it. So there you go. We can run end the show right it. there. Go ahead, yeah. George. End it. No. <laughs> <laughs> we still have some time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other things, too, is... You know, a lot of times people don't want to really, they feel like they're giving up their, you know, their money and their, you know, when you're giving an agent compensation and commission and you're not seeing what they were working for, you will certainly see your agents working this year. Um, you know, there are a lot of agents who got into the business the past couple of years because things seemed easier. Um, and, and it was. For the most part, I mean, there was still a lot of things that you need to know how to do and do the right way, but it was a lot easier. But those agents are not going to be familiar with what's coming up in this next 
in this next market. So I worry a bit about those agents. I mean, we actually, some of our agents who have been with us for a few years, I know, you know, one of the agents got a new listing and like that first weekend she was like, oh my God, like I, I, I didn't get any offers. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yep, well, yep. that's bring a book next week because that's what we used to do. Um, but when you, when it, you, you have to stop thinking about it as I'm giving up my money. I'd love to have this compensation conversation with somebody out there who's really against, you know, real estate agents. It is our job. And if you're hiring somebody full time, and again, what did we see in the past couple of years? And again, everybody has to do what, what is best for them. I'm just letting you know, for someone who's been in this a very long time, like even tomorrow, I'm going to a CE class from eight to eight tomorrow. Um, I'm always learning, always doing something, right? But I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> um, real estate agents, compensation. Oh, yeah, real, with the compensation. You know, it isn't, it, it, it's surprising because I did have a conversation actually one with one of my sales in December. And I was like, at the end of the day, this is what I truly ended up with. And they, they were very surprised by it. You know, I mean, you have your split with your company. You have, if you're on a team, you split with your team. You have the expenses. Expenses are more now than they were probably in the past because yeah. of everything that you have to do with booths and social media and all that stuff. But they have statistics that show that, and this was by realtor.com is that you will still make more money. So the 2021, this is 2021. So the other 2022 numbers aren't out yet. Um, the typical for sale by owner home sold. So this is nationwide for two hundred and sixty thousand dollars compared to three hundred and eighteen for agent assisted homes. So that's fifty eight thousand dollars more when you're listed with a real estate agent mm -hmm. that you'll that you'll potentially gain. So that in this situation with a two hundred and sixty thousand dollar house to a three eighteen that's the compensation plus more. Yeah. So you end up yeah. with more at the end of the day. And guess what? A lot more money and a lot le less headaches. Yeah. But I think that the times of, you know, my cousin's friend got her license, so I have to use her, you know, those types of conversations, I I would just be leery of of doing that. Or I'm going to say it, I, I, I'm really nervous for part-time agents right now that are working a full-time job because I feel like people are going to have to be on their toes at their job working nine to five, Monday through Friday, because of the way the economy is, I mean, you don't want a chance losing that job. Yeah. No. All right. Go ahead. You talk. <laughs> no, I'm literally <laughs> listening to you and staring at those crackers. <laughs> kind of I, licked the, I licked the top. No, one. don't say that. I, did, I licked the top one, so don't touch it. Hey, you can have those ones no. under there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, I agree. I mean, I just, I, I think that no matter what, I mean, this is, a, this is, and we, we talk about this. I know this is sort of off topic a little bit, but we have this discussion with agents who want to join our office. We, mm -hmm. we always ask, like, is this something that you do full time? Because that's mm -hmm. important to us. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's important that our agents, you know, give it their all and give it, mm -hmm. you know, in, in well, because with their... And, and I'm going to agree with sellers right now is you are, you are paying a really significant amount when you look at it. Um, you, you are, you know, you are paying that fee for the services. You certainly want someone who is doing in everything that they possibly can to get your home sold in a, in a more difficult time when things are not going as quickly. And especially when it comes to pricing, you, you don't want to hire somebody who just says, okay, what do you want to price it at? It's like, well, where do you think it should be priced at? And then you come to terms with what that number is. But don't just always go with the person who says it's the highest because that isn't how it works. Yeah. And, and you should know, you should ask how they got to that highest price. Mm -hmm. You should ask how they, anybody got to any price. And you do, I've said this a million times, you do a really great job of showing um, mm -hmm. sellers how you get to your price in your market analysis. Uh, I love doing CMAs. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a training. I, I'm going to do another updated training in the office too. Uh, because the numbers are the numbers, and that's where they it is. don't lie. They don't lie, right. and buyers can see them now. So yeah, you know that's why it's so different. Um, I can see that Julia. So Julia, um, I think that's from last year. I mean, last week. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was from last week. Okay. 
Well, she told me she was doing some stats. Oh, okay. So you, I don't have them. Cause those are the only ones. Um, so yeah. So um, it looks like Plymouth County single families active properties on the market in 2021 there was 241. In 2022, there's 460. What? Yeah. That's what she's saying right there in Plymouth County. So that <clears> means that houses are staying on the market longer, right? Yeah, well, so we've, probably we've price. said that there, we've seen a lot of price adjustments. Uh, I at least saw a lot of price adjustments last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I don't, <laughs> yeah. well, I just don't want to talk about these numbers because I just don't know exactly what, where she got the data from. I should have talked to her beforehand. Yeah. Um, but Suffolk County, she said, active properties on the market, 2022, 126 versus last year, they were 81. So there are more houses on the market, apparently, according to Julia, so um, than there was last year. But that only tells you that buyers are not. Well, we have to stop saying last year because it's a new year. Oh, yeah. In 2021. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> it's 2019, according to me. <laughs> In 2024. In 2024, according to mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we had those last week, so I think it might have been um, okay. for the end of the year. But yeah, I mean, I, you, you need somebody who knows how to get all this information because I, I don't necessarily think that a lot of um, sellers know how to get this data mm -hmm. and know how to sort of get the sort of um, mm -hmm. equation is what I'm looking for uh, that we use to um, mm -hmm. to get a sale price. And again, you do a really great job of explaining that. So maybe mm -hmm. they'll take your information and then hopefully not <laughs> kick rocks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And that is the thing is I think that, you know, our job is to fully, you know, educate our clients on what is going on in the market and i think that that's where you know the true professionals sort of stand out is because we do know how much the house on your street sold for we do know you know the different situations about all that and that's yeah. really important too when you're talking to appraisers too yeah well speaking of other people other than a real estate agent it's also important to hire professionals in the real estate world so not just real estate agents but a real estate attorney mm -hmm. you know a, an attorney that does this <laughs> for a living you know um mm -hmm. somebody who knows the ins and outs of what it is to sell a house um you know it's not just oh my my uh, mother's cousin's yeah. nephew's dog's oh. adoptive parents <laughs> Our attorneys who <laughs> live so, in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, or I have my a divorce attorney is going to do it. Yeah. No offense to divorce attorneys, but they're very, very defensive when it comes to, you know, real estate and doing that whole process. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll have lots of good stories um, out of my class tomorrow. So um, I'm going to um, see my friend Charlie Burke at Mass Academy of Real Estate tomorrow. Mark and I are going to do our CE class uh, tomorrow with him, which is always fun. And he has the best story. So I'm sure I'll come out of there with some really yeah. good ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the other things that we're going to be doing next week in our office is um, the way that we stay up to date and sort of current on different scenarios of what can go wrong with, a. Re I think you can't make what's wrong better if you don't know what the wrongs are, right? So you can't look out for it the next time. We're going to be doing a panel discussion. We like to do this every year at our office and we ask, you know, three or four of our agents to sort of um, take one of their listing or take one of their situations, mm -hmm. buyer or seller from the 2022 and, you know, what I learned from this transaction. So mm -hmm. that's so important to do because, again, we're talking about what could happen if you hear the stories and you hear how it ended. And I like when we always say, what could have we done differently or what could have we done better? Um, that's just going to help us with our next ones. Yeah. Um, so anyways, so. if you have any questions for us, feel free to call us again, 781-837-4900, or you can uh, reach out to us on Facebook. We are live on Facebook right now. Uh, so you can go to Sharon Costa McNamara, or you can go to any of our connect pages and find us like Pembroke Connect, Marshfield Connect, a couple others. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Anything? <laughs> I was just looking at our, our list of other professionals. So we have mortgage lenders. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, uh, we always are talking with our agents. Okay. Who are you using right now? What, and I'm sure it'll come up 
next week when we have that discussion Mm -hmm. um, with what we learned last year in our transactions. Um, And, you know, we will talk about, okay, this this person was excellent. They were great. They were on top of everything. They're very responsive. Mm -hmm. They they were very helpful with my clients. They, you know, sort of strategize with them. You know, Mm -hmm. do you think that this loan program would be better? You know, Mm -hmm. what's your goal and stuff like that? And then there will be discussions where. Mm-hmm. It'll be, yeah, um, <laughs> this one needs improvement. <laughs> mm-hmm, absolutely. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> or so. don't use this one. I'll come yeah. right out and say, don't use this one. So yeah. I was trying to be polite. I know, but I'm not. <laughs> if, I, if I think that they're terrible, I'm certainly not going to use them. And I'm going to tell everyone in our office not to use them. Um, which what I think sometimes people think I'm a little too tough. But I have high expectations for my clients, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about is sort of this... Um, it's funny because my career has changed from like first time home buyers and, you know, to now where Mary is working mostly with our first time home buyers. And I'm sort of in this new uh, demographic. It's not new. I've been doing it for a long time, but I'm really enjoying and loving the experience of working with the boomer sort of generation or even the boomer generation who just lost like a family member Mm -hmm. or they're selling their mom and dad's house. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. They just lost their spouse. Do I stay in my house? Do I sell my house? So we had a lot of that this year. And I'm just recalling sitting in the room um, recently with a client and with, it was two sisters uh, and we had their third sister on I think that's the fish tank. <laughs> yeah, there we, we suddenly heard something weird. It's the fish tank downstairs. They're getting fed their dinner. Yep. I'm, and I'm joking. <clears throat> yeah. But um, I remember sitting in the conference room and they are not, a, they didn't, they weren't familiar with what exactly had to be done. And we had the two sisters in there with me and then one sister on the phone. Sorry, I'm choking. And it was, oh, do you know how I can get a dumpster? I'll make the help. And then, like, they start writing notes. Oh, I'll try to get a dumpster there, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to send you my my dumpster guy. So I send over the dumpster guy, Mm -hmm. text it right in front of her. And she's like, oh, that's great. And then I'm like, well, why don't I? She's like, I'm only here for a few more days. Do you think they'll be able to get the dumpster there, you know, in the next couple days? And I was like, let me call him. So I called him and I was like, hey, is there any chance that you can, you know, I have a client that's going to be calling you. Can you get the dumpster there? She's only here for a few days. He's like, you know what? I have a a little blank in my calendar this afternoon. I'll get it over there this afternoon. Wow, I didn't know that that's how it happened. Yeah. We literally were sitting in the conference room and anything and everything that they said that they wanted or needed, I was like, let me just make the phone call right now. Mm -hmm. And that was the feedback that I got from them was that they were so impressed with the people that I knew and the yeah. people I was able to connect them with in a very short period of time that helped them in this process. So um, I think that that's really important to, because I've been in the industry so long, mm-hmm. um, I do know, you know, the people to call. And honestly, the vendors that I, you know, that I'm aligned with, I'm so fortunate and so grateful that they treat my clients like top notch. They're just awesome group of people. Yeah, I mean, we, you and everyone pretty much here works with, like, mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. We always say we have the best of the best, but we also know the best of the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we work with the best of the best. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're very I guess I wonder if they sense. say the same thing about us. Oh, I wonder. I know. Well, Saturday, uh, we are going to be here um, having um, our show. We'll be live again Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, so 10 to 11. Um, it will be myself and Melissa. Mm-hmm. If you, yep. Mm-hmm. And we're also going to have a guest. Um, I don't know his last name, but I know he's the new owner of Imperial name. Home Inspections. Yeah. His name's Mark. <laughs> and his name is Mark. Yep. So he's the new owner of Imperial Inspection Services. Um, our good friend, uh, Steve Cook, was the owner for years and years, and we've had him on our show mm-hmm. multiple times. And um, I recently saw Mark at uh, a home inspection, and I asked him if he would like to be on yeah. in the new year. So he will yeah. be with us on Saturday. So certainly, you know, tune in on Saturday from 10 to 11, uh, talking about home inspections, because there's a lot of things that have changed in that sort of arena as well when it comes to, and I think a big part of it is negotiating. Yeah. You can negotiate again. Yeah. There's, and there's so many different inspections you can do too, you mm-hmm. know? So if it's private 
water you want to do a well test you if the, you have a basement that you're gonna finish or it mm-hmm. is finished or whatever you can do a radon test you know there's um what's the air quality like the mold, oh, yeah. the mold air, yeah. air quality mm-hmm. tests you can do there's just so many different things especially what they offer so yeah. um yeah. so i'm excited to see mark yeah uh, yeah mark will be here mark from imperial Inspection services, because they do so much, not just home yeah. inspections, so yeah. that's why I always get that wrong. So tune in then, um, and again, in the meantime, if you have any questions or any topic ideas for us for the new year, yeah. we're going to be getting together, uh, myself and Melissa are going to be getting together uh, with Mary, and... Um, <laughs> I say that questioningly uh, and with Mary. We love Mary. She's just not here tonight. Um, and Julia. And we're going to come up with a full agenda of great ideas and topics for this year. Uh, like a yeah. 1031 exchange. Yeah. And we have like things. 100 shows for the rest of the year that we have to fill. <laughs> I'm thinking twice a week. No, yeah. <laughs> you just had a panic attack. I did. So we need 100 topics. If you could just help us with that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, if you could just help us, that'd mm-hmm. be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it, we always say this, hire a professional. I mean, why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Why, what, why wouldn't you? Can you name one thing that you wouldn't hire a professional for? No, I mean, it's so funny because, you know, when you're looking to do something in your house, you yeah. always want to hire a professional. Yeah. So that's that's our takeaway for today yeah. is when you are thinking about buying or selling a house, we always think that you should be using a professional and you know what? It isn't always about buying and selling a house. If you just need advice, really good advice and really uh, solid advice about the real estate market, give us a call. And my team would love to help you. My name is Sharon McNamara. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. You can catch us at 781-826-8000 or bostonconnect.com. Have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you live Saturday, 10 to 11. Bye, George. Happy Bye. New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to you, too. Bye, Sharon. Bye-bye. And Melissa. W-A-T-D-F-M Marshfield. <laughs> W-B-A-